in the name of the one Lord, of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, His Word, His Spirit. Amen. First of all, I would like to greet my dear niece, Siham, um, who uh, sent me a uh, YouTube a video about the discussion between a Jewish rabbi and a Christian preacher. Well, uh, thanks for uh, listening. Uh, we have been told that uh, by the rabbi that uh, Judaism is about knowing and Christianity is only about believing. And this is not true because Jesus says literally this and you find this in the Gospel of St. John. This is life eternal that they know you and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. So knowledge is important and St. Paul in his letter to the Romans chapter 12, verse, the first verse actually talks literally about the logiki latria, logiki latria, logic cult, a logic worship, a reasonable worship. Because uh, St. Paul himself also in the letter to the Romans, first chapter, verse 18, says that the heathens, the polytheists were, were foolish because uh, they did not conclude from the splendor of the creatures to the splendor of the one creator. Now, uh, the rabbi seems to say that uh, Jesus contradicted the law, did not apply the law, and that he contradicted himself when he declared in Matthew 5, 17, I did not come to abolish the law and the prophets, I did not come to abolish, I came to accomplish. Then the rabbi goes on to quote, or to misquote actually, uh, Jesus by saying that whoever does not fulfill one of the precepts will be cursed. No, it's not will be cursed. You don't find this expression in the gospel, dear rabbi. It's uh, he will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. So, <clears throat> Uh, Jesus himself, as, as the preacher said, gave the proof. If you don't believe in me, he said, this you find also in the Gospel of St. John, believe in the works that I am performing, that I am doing in front of you all. It's no secret. The miracles of Jesus were no secret. So, how about the law? <clears throat> Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the prophecies, to the best of our knowledge, in the New Testament and in the Christian exegesis, more than 300 prophecies of the Old Testament have been accomplished and fulfilled in Jesus, in his life, in the church, in his mother. Then, the law, namely the Ten Commandments. Well, Jesus never rejected the Ten Commandments, Whoever asked Jesus, what shall I do to enter life eternal? Jesus would say, well, keep the commandments. So, we have to make a clear difference between the commandments, the Ten Commandments, and the prescriptions of the rabbis, which came, which apparently uh, came to the number of 603, with a total of course, of 613 Ten Commandments and 603 precepts of the, of the Tanakh, of the Pentateuch, and of the Rabbis. Well, what Jesus did not abolish, but Jesus actually foretold, was the abolition of all the prescriptions concerning the Temple, the Sacrifice, and Priesthood. Because until this very day, 2012, we don't have any Jewish temple, any Jewish priesthood, any Jewish sacrifice, in spite of all efforts, since the year 70 AD. So now the, the main problem remains for rites, external prescriptions, like, let's say, 
uh, stoning adulterers, especially married ones. Uh, the harem, harem, which means uh, the, uh, the anathema, which means killing the, the heathens, men, taking captives, their, their women and children, burning their properties. Well, none of this is applied by the Jewish government since 1948. None of this is applied by the Jews themselves in any other parts of the world where you may have uh, you know, solid and consistent uh, Jewish entities. So the point remains about, extern about these external bodily prescriptions which Jesus did not ask us to keep but which are actually kept in some Christian denominations, like circumcision, abolition, distinction between pure and impure food. Although Jesus said that all food is, is pure, it's what gets out of the mouth of a person that defiles him or her, not what enters the mouth. Anyway, let's come back to, the, uh, to Matthew 5.17 where Jesus is, uh, where Jesus says, I did not come to abolish, I came to fulfill, to fulfill. Now, fulfill, in Aramaic, Jesus spoke Aramaic, is the root male, male, himali, to bring to perfection, bring, to bring the fullness, the plenitude, male. In Greek, it's plirose, Plerose means perfection, fullness. Jesus takes the spirit, the goal, the meaning of these external bodily prescriptions like circumcision, ablutions, you know, washing this, washing that. What's the goal? What's the purpose? The purpose is simply purity. Purity of faith and purity of behavior. In order to keep the purity of faith, Jews thought in the old days that it was their duty and their right to kill the pagan men who would have been a, a risk, a danger for the monotheism of the Jews. But they would take easily the captives, women, and children of those pagans, perhaps forgetting that they were even pagans, and that a woman is more dangerous because she is the one who brings up the children without you knowing when you are at work. So what we are trying, what I'm trying to say is, is this, to fulfill and not to abolish. Jesus does not abolish the spirit the meaning, the purpose of all the, of any of these bodily external prescriptions, that of condemning to death the adulterers, that of condemning to death, condemning to death the man who goes to bed with his wife or with his woman when, when she has her period, condemning to death, I'm sorry to give these details, and then to death uh, the, the Jew that does not have his uh, male child circumcised. You just read the, the, the Pentateuch, the Torah, you find all these prescriptions, and none of them is applied by Jews nowadays. Jesus never invited us to apply literally, bodily, I would say physically, concretely, none, any of these, he took the spirit, the meaning, the sense, the purpose, the goal. What is the goal? The purity of mind, soul, and of course the chastity of the body which comes as a, as a result and the purity of faith. Maintain your faith without killing people. Be a good Jew without having been killed, 
without getting killed for not having your child circumcised. Do something else in, in order to repair it. That sentence is not, uh, is not applied by the Jewish government in 1948, except for one case. Well, I think that we will have to continue this conversation sometime. Thanks such a lot for your attention.